The American Battle Monuments Commission exists to, to honor the service of American military personnel during the two world wars. Traditionally, we maintain the venue. But now, as we look forward into the future, we see that we've got a, an added responsibility to tell the story of what happened to a new generation and to make that relevant to them. When we first created these sites, the, the focus was simply maintaining the venue for the Gold Star Mothers. You really didn't need to tell them the story. They'd lived through it they'd had a very personal connection with it. So our focus was maintaining the cemetery for them to come and grieve. Now, 75 years later, those ladies are long gone. And most of the people alive today have no memory of the war and have no interaction with anyone who does. So our role becomes to tell the story in a manner that's relevant to them today. And the way the agency has chosen to do that is to use the vehicle of the powerful biographies we have to make that human connection between a new audience of young people and the stories of courage and sacrifice that this cemetery has so many of. As early as the spring of 1942, we had the Army Air Corps arriving in this area in great numbers and we had operations rather early in 42 into, into Europe. We had casualties and we obviously needed somewhere to bury our dead. Cambridge University gave us the 30 acre parcel of land here in the centre of Cambridge and on the 7th of December 1943, which was a, a date chosen two years to the day after the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, we buried for the first time here, and then we buried throughout the war. At the end of the war, this site was chosen as the permanent cemetery in the UK to house all those whose bodies were remaining from the conflict in the Second World War. To see what these men were thrown into at such a young age it is humbling and seeing how they responded to that. Some of the more powerful experiences for me have been hearing the stories of these young men who were thrown into absolutely appalling situations and responded with courage that really was humbling to hear about. One of the more powerful experiences I've had here in the last few months was a visit of a 95-year-old veteran who came back with his daughter on perhaps a last visit to Mattingly. And his daughter gave this to him as his 95th birthday present. And he came here and he explained that the last time he'd come to Mattingly was to bring a crew to be buried. And he told me the powerful story of his connection to that crew. Now this man had been a gunner, a teenage gunner, who'd been injured on a previous flight, so he was off air status. So he was not on flying duty. And while he was off flying duty, the Army Air Corps gave him driver assignments. And on one particular day, his job was to pick up a B-17 crew, take him to eat, they ate breakfast, they wanted to stop by the chapel on the way to the aircraft. And he said, when they arrived at the aircraft, they all huddled. They put their arms around each other and they took a moment of silence together. And he said that was a powerful moment. And then they went off on their flight. I think it was a, 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 um, a mission into a target into Germany. And they were damaged on the flight. They received some, some flak damage and on landing they crashed and although they arrived back at the airfield they crashed and they were all killed and his last duty of that particular day was to pick the bodies up bag them up and drive them to Mattingly American Cemetery and that was the last time he was here 
he came with his notebook with these 10 names that he jotted down 75 years ago and came back to visit those men. And nine of them had been repatriated, but the 10th was still here. And it was, a, it was a powerful moment to be standing with him over the grave of that one remaining soldier and have him tell me the story of his personal connection. And it's, it's experiences like that for me that are the most powerful as superintendent here. In particular in the UK, our role is to reinforce and advance what Churchill referred to as a special relationship between the British and the Americans. And certainly nothing speaks more powerfully of that special relationship than does the 10,000 souls that are commemorated here in Manningley.